Welcome to another Mortal Online 2 video. I'm Base Bellagio. Today, I want to talk about things to do in this game and end game goals. Basically, a lot of people, because this is a sandbox MMORPG, there's not many games like this. You know, there's no holding of the hand and theme park missions going from quest giver to quest giver you have to form your own missions your own quests your own adventure and i'm going to give you guys some ideas on how to do that we are hiding today up at the ruin because the main server is popping off in bakti a lot of activity a lot of a lot of friendly banter and i mean that not facetiously a lot of great people in town today um but I want to record a quick video. We can't have them talking to me at the moment. So we're up here hiding. This is a cool little spot. Goal number one and your mission and thing to do is find your missions for your profession, for your build, basically your runs, we would call them. Where are you gonna go run to do your missions? Like if you are a leather worker, you have to go hunting to get leathers, right? If you're a metal worker, you have to form a run. Like in Tarkov, we have different loot runs, you know, through the map to get stuff. And you have to formulate your own paths on where you're gonna go get materials or your profession. Maybe you are a book trader. You go from Vada to Meduli to Tindrum to Morinkur and you're, you're bringing books back and forth. That's part of your mission. And I find that this is profession based, not really your build based, more of professions. If you're a fisherman, you want to find the best and rarest fishing spots. And with all that money or material you're going to get, hopefully you're going to be making money with it or selling it to vendors. Personal mission number two is claim a hometown and bank super bank basically you find a town that you call home maybe it's the town you teleported to out out of haven maybe meduli bakti anywhere and you want to just load that bank up and then start upgrading the bank how do you upgrade your bank you buy bags these are the cheapest bag you could buy people use these for you know materials regions but for six gold you get a spacious bag and you want to basically upgrade every bank slot to one of those someday to have ultimate banking room. Once you load up your hometown or your headquarters with material and you feel comfortable that death does not mean anything to you in this game, as long as you're not losing reputation, right? Going under that negative, that zero mark. You want to get other towns and start loading them up. You know, maybe you go, you move over from Meduli to Tindrum and you start loading up the Tindrum bank. Maybe you start basing yourself out of multiple towns, like I am. I'm out of Bakti and Meduli. Maybe you want to go all the way to the other side of the map and start banking. And, and then, then if you want to get even more creative, you go start banking in a lawless town. I have done uh, multiple runs to the jungle camp with a lot of regions, 20 gold worth of magic regions every time I go. And I'm starting to make a stockpile of magic ingredients down there. Maybe someday we'll do a whole RP episode of me being a magic vendor in jungle camp, right? Start banking in multiple cities. Number three, once you have all that money and material, you wanna start what I call the broker wars. Here's a whole nother mission you could do, another gameplay loop. Start playing all the brokers around the game and pick pick stuff that you want to buy and sell. If you want to even buy, you can you know find other towns that have cheap cup from. You buy it all up, you teleport it, you know, with your GM powers, right? I'm looking at you, you big streamers out there. We know, we all know. I'm just kidding. You basically transport it is the word I'm looking for. We are recording this live. So we make a couple mistakes. You transport it to another town. 
and you sell it for high, buy for low. If you have a lot of money and you're bored, you can literally find any city in the game and buy everything of one category off the market. You could buy all the skill books from one town. You could pick one skill book, we'll say like steel smithing skill book. It's being sold for a 25 gold, we'll pretend. And you buy them all out of Fabrinum. Well, I don't think it sells in Fabrinum. You buy them all out of Morinker, the broker. And then you put them back on there for 50 gold, essentially doubling the price. You know, you start making monopolies on the broker. Very powerful. Very fun, too. After that, another mission you could do in this game, another task end game, is exploration, of course. But I'm talking about, like, detailed you learning the map. Treating this game like a first-person shooter, like anything. Call of Duty, Halo, Battlefield, Tarkov. You treat this game like you learn the map. You learn, like, and not just, like, like right now I'm learning the jungle. I know the southwestern jungle very well. I'm learning the southeastern jungle now. And the southern jungle. Once I'm done mastering the jungle, I'll be able to negotiate all across the map. You know? And, like, use the jungle as kind of like a secret paths instead of taking the main roads, you know, from the southern area of the map. Then I'll want to learn the north, those northern mountains. There's so many trails up there and pathways and the northern shore I've never been to yet. These are like macro exploration missions. Micro exploration would be like learning the entire intricacies of the map and the footpaths around Bakhti. Learning every little mountain spot that my build can jump on top of with a bow and make, you know, the big tin can uh, melee mongrels chase me up here, basically. You know what I mean? This is micro exploration, learning the micro maps, going to Galkor and learning, like, that whole town, Galkor, is like a PvP arena. Plus, you can bank there. So it's like, it's crazy. Learn the maps, learn the area, and the game. Number five is make a name for yourself. A reputation. Being a streamer, people either love me or hate me. People are either fans of me and they'll spare my life, or... I'll spare their life or I'll end up killing their horse and they're like, I like your videos, man. Why? I'm new to this guild. I'm sorry that I'm in a guild that openly attacks you, but I'm the new guy. I literally just joined today. I'm out of Haven. So I end up giving them a horse back, stuff like that. So it's different. But you out there, if you don't stream or make videos or write amazing guides, like there's people out there that write amazing guides. Uh, Rob Mo made a great taming guide, pet guide. Bill Bonte from Mana has a great older magic guide up on Steam, but it still is good to today. It still has a lot of great information in it from Mortal Online 1. Information that will be used further as more schools of magic come out. You can make a name for yourself in game. There are people that hang out in the graveyard. They're more of the infamous characters, and everyone knows their name around the whole game. Because that's their PvP. They go to the grave. They won't even kill you. They'll, 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 they'll just beat you, mercy you, run away. Stuff like that. There's people out there that like run around and are charitable. I just saw a member of the Gentleman give a horse to a member of Inactive. I think I have it recorded. You might see that in the future. There's random stories around back to video. Who knows? Make a name for yourself, whether infamous or good. And I think that could be a whole gameplay loop that leads to my next two topics because these are out of order on my list, but the reputation thing should lead into number six is guilds, making your own guild, joining a guild, any flavor you want is out there. PvP, both, both random player killing and RP player killing. There is honorable PvP guilds, there's like pirates out there, bandit guilds, there's uh, guilds of criminals. There's this guy mining. <laughs> we could sneak up on. There are every flavor, then maybe you have an idea for a guild. Maybe you have 
taken all these previous steps, you have enough gold now to make your own guild. You make a guild of whatever you can think of. A guild called the police, and you hang around towns policing, you know? Anything. The world is your oyster. Is, you know, the imagination is your only limit to that. And that leads to number seven. RP. Roleplay is a huge, huge thing you could do in this game. Both being a good guy or a bad guy, or even neutral. You can sit in a, a store in town, one of the empty buildings. Roleplay as a vendor. Like I was talking about earlier, you can go to jungle camp like I'm going to do. Roleplay as a magic merchant. You can do everything in this game. There's the Ashen Order that has great videos out there. There are the milkers, you know, just some like awesome stuff going on out there in the realm of roleplay. And again, the imagination is your only limit. Just to give you an example from other games where people roleplay without even having VoIP or voice acting. An Ultima Online Outlands, an amazing mod that has 3,000 people playing at any given time of the day. A complete player-made mod community, awesome game. They have a whole guild of orcs, of humans that dress up as orcs, and all they do is type and talk orcish to you. Pawn Star Gaming has a great vid video on this, and it is amazing to me. They're not even using VoIP. You could take that into this game, be a whole Thursar only guild. Or a Robert Tenure Rizars or something, right? Who knows? The whole point is RP. And use that RP to make a reputation for yourself. You don't have to be a streamer to get clout in Mortal Online. Literally, the RP wins people's hearts whether you RP is a bad guy or a good guy. But the better you are at just goofing around, making a voice, using your own voice, sticking to it, whatever story arc you're doing, people love it. Number seven. Now I gotta get back on my list in order. Number seven would... Or did we do seven? I'll fix that in editing. Either or, eight or seven. Mastery is next. Mastering your build, mastering your craft, whether you're a in a profession you you make bows you want to make the best bows source the best material basically mastering this game and there's multiple layers to builds for example the melee build out there there is like three four five different layers of refinement people are like learning the combat first layer second is learning their build third is like re-rolling probably designing a different build trying to go like full heavy melee or now a lot of people are re-rolling to the deck speed melee. I made a video about it. Check it out. Basically, fast fighters right now, in my opinion, are extremely deadly, but extremely broken because they're able to use the heaviest armor in the game with no penalty. That's another video you could check out. My armor video. Hopefully, I have both tags up that you can click on. But mastering your build, your craft, that's definitely a whole gameplay loop in itself. And that includes a lot of things I've mentioned. Exploration, learning that. The next task you could do in this game, an end game goal, is housing. Housing. Not enough people talk about this. There is an entire housing system in this game. Let me see if I can find us a house out here in the woods. I bet on top of the mountain, maybe. Um, there's an entire housing system with different upgrades and tiers. There's a tier, there's a small house, medium house, large house, and each of them have three upgrades from what I am told. Tier one, tier two, tier three, or it starts at tier one, and then you have two upgrades. Tier, tier two, tier three. Someone correct me in the comments down below, and thank you guys for the awesome comments always. Tier 1 house, for example, costs 150 gold for the deed and a lot of material. For example, maybe 25... Oh, what was it again? 25 stacks of wood? No. I know, I know for a fact it's like 7,000 metal or 6,000 metal, 
9,000 stone. It's like around there. Then the wood is like 20,000. So that would be like 20 stacks of wood, right? It's not 20,000 weight. I'm, th I'm, I'm not naming it right. Someone's going to comment down below. I haven't built the house yet. I'm still saving up money. I'm going to get the material eventually. My whole thing is this. Housing is awesome in this game. Very Ultima Online-esque. You want to pick a house that... You can go multiple directions. You could pick an RP house. You know, that's up on top of a mountain with, with zero use. Uh, because you have to lug stuff up there. A house that's useful would be a house like a... With a butcher table inside of it or different tables for you to utilize out in the bush when you're out in the wild like maybe you build a butcher house next to shore prowlers and you use that to butcher shore prowlers that's just one example you could put a house right next to the volcano and hope no one's gonna break it down and use it to mine teftra or whatever it's called up there the good stuff and then there's also strongholds in this game those are like mini castles that you could place anywhere as long as it's a flat spot open spot and then on top of that there's the keeps that guilds own and fight over and give you way like different awesome things you could do with the keeps that is another end game goal another one is your next one i think it might be nine we'll find out when i edit PvP prep and arena maps. We kind of talked about that about that earlier in micro exploration. But basically, you when you prep for PvP, if you watch my video, Endgame PvP, you want to get as much reputation as possible stacked up so you're not worried about losing it. And then you can go out there and do any kind of PvP you want. Both good or bad. Or neutral. But on top of that, you're going to need equipment. If you have a guild that's rich and they feed you everything, that's fine and dandy. But even I'm in the, one of the richest guilds in the game, and I don't expect people just to spoon feed me stuff. I make people armor, they bring me material. I also get my own material, and I source crazy stuff like the crustacean carapace that you either love it or hate it. Um, and then I bring that back and make that for people, stuff like that. Or the whole thing is... Me being an armor smith, I have a lot of leftover material. What that means is I can make myself as much armor as I want. I'm a bow crafter. I can make myself bows. You've heard it before. Basically, my PvP looks different than somebody that doesn't have the ability to make some stuff for themselves. I just met someone in town that was like dirt poor. They were like wearing like rags. <laughs> you know who you are out there. We were, we were just talking. That's hilarious. Um... So it's different for everybody, but you want to prep for PvP. If you are a curite, like main headquartered person, like you live in Bacti, you don't care about Tindrum, you don't care about Meduli, maybe you have enemies with some of the Meduli guilds. So you, you're basically going to go to Meduli or surrounding area like Vada, the closest place to Meduli, start stocking up stuff, getting ready, prepping, Getting your rep right and then learning the map. You want to go scout out the area. You don't want to just go to Galkor and PvP unless you go scout it out first. So that's number whatever one we're on. <laughs> Next is future DLC prep. I'm using the word DLC loosely. This game is not going to have DLC that you have to buy. That you have to like, you know. There, if you support the game, you're going to get it. That's why the game has subscription based when the subscription gets put into place, which it has not yet. So they fix the game. But prepping for future DLC would be like, I want to spec into necromancy when they come out with the new school of magic, like a lot of people. We don't know exactly what necromancy is going to entail. If it's anything like Mortal Online 1, or if it's similar, what kind of changes Henrik has planned. In Mortal Online 1, according to Bill Bonte's Magic Guide on Steam, you require spirit spirit boxes and spirits from Spiritism in order to do some of the necromancy spells. And if I misread his guide, it might be all of the spells. Look at this urn here. What the hell? 
So, do I want to start prepping now and getting... Look at this. I didn't even know this was here. Wow. We found the Master Sword. Um, do I want to start buying spirit boxes now if they're cheap? Because the price will go up. Do I? It might be wasting my money because Henrik might not even have that planned. In my opinion, that sounds like a really interesting gameplay loop for the mages. Again, like, the melee people are out there swinging swords and, and training naked up in the rooftops of, of bars around the world, while the mages are out there, like, producing... Like, we need spiritists now to produce spirit boxes, possibly, for the necromancers, you know what I mean? I don't know, it sounds really awesome. Like, just that whole... How come warriors don't have to do that? Like, warriors don't have to produce sweat rags to use in future gym competitions. No, I don't know. I'm just making fun. But I just think it's a really interesting loop. And should I should I go prep right now and get spirit boxes? Very interesting concept. What other DLC prep are you prepping for? Maybe the siege mechanics is going to require wood and stone and metal. Maybe your guilds are stockpiling that just for TC just to start building stuff as soon as it comes out. This is a very feasible gameplay loop right now. Prepping for future DLC. Because, you know, say what you want about Star Vault. They are working behind the scenes, not just on fixing the server, but on all the cool things that are coming. And a lot of cool stuff is planned. From boats to wagons. You know, will we be building those boats? And building those wagons, like in Ultima Online, I know ship... In Outlands, I think there is shipbuilding. In all regular Ultima Online, you just buy this ship, I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure. Again, Henrik said we will be building furniture in the future. It will be like a thing to do. Will it be a secondary skill? A, a primary profession? Furniture building? I don't know, like... Some stuff will be found, some stuff will be built. I'm pretty sure Henrik said that. Correct me in the comments. And that is our list of 11 things to do in this game right now currently. End game goals, concepts and ideas for you to work with. If you utilize these tips and tricks, I think you will have an amazing time in this game. You will have things to do, and these kind of starter ideas will get you on the path of coming up with your own concepts. Your own ideas of what you want to do, where you want to go, what you want to explore. I haven't even named the dungeons yet. We haven't even named some of the camps out there. The obvious things that you're already doing out there, you know, like farming bandits, farming satyrs these are all things that you know i think is hopefully pretty standard if not if you're brand new yes go to the camps that those are all labeled on the mortal online map search for link will be in the description but thank you guys for watching i'm gonna get back to t town and banter with the homies there's a lot of homies in bacti they want to banter a lot of homeboys brothers Hello, my brother. Hey, how's it going? Very good on this beautiful day. See, just random. See how friendly? Amazing. This town is great, guys. This town is amazing. If this was Tindrum, they would they would mock they would mock me for wearing crab shell. They would say, "Oh, you're not in a tux. You're not in a suit. A suit." Holy crap. Holy crap. These guys are dueling or something. They almost hit that guard. Amazing. I want to sit here and watch. Guys, thank you for watching. Thumbs up. Thumbs down. If you want. Hit that subscribe button and bell icon for more videos. This was kind of long. But I wanted to give you guys something to chew on. And thank you for watching.